Welcome to the second video in the TMG's presentations on how to set up your MT, Viavi MTS 2000 or Viavi MTS 4000 OTDR to work on the new multi-technology network by the MBN. Now this video is going to be based on working on the LFN side of it. So as if you're working on a fiber to the curb and you're testing from the DPU rate, maybe back to the FJL, we're going to discuss today how you set up your OTDR to make sure you conform to the NBN documents. Now, before we proceed, um, just make sure you're aware and you've got copies of these two NBN documents here, because using these documents and watching this video is gonna make your life so much easier um, before you go out and test, you know exactly what you're doing. Okay, so in the last video, we talked about some of the buttons on the OTDR, and if you haven't seen that video yet, I suggest you go back and watch that as how to set up your files. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into setup and we're going to look at the acquisition part of the setup. So uh, the first thing we need to look at is basically the laser. Uh, the laser is obviously uh, what uh, wavelengths your OTR is going to send out. So for NBN it's 1310, 16, 25. So we're going to select that. Acquisition is uh, you can set up as auto and that will do OTR do all the work for you, but that won't comply to the MBN workbooks. Everything has to comply, so you have to set up as manual. Uh, the next setting is range. So uh, typically you need to be setting up your OTDRs, so it's 1.5 to two times the range of the fiber you're testing. And then the pulse width, uh, because we work on the LFN, has to be either 200 nanoseconds or 100 nanoseconds. Um, Resolution you can keep as auto, that's not really going to make too much difference. Uh, but the time you've got to change to 30 seconds. That's right, so it'll be 30 seconds testing on 1310 and on 1625. And the rest of these, the OptiPulses, you can leave alone. So the other settings you need to go into here is into the analysis. Um, and what you need to look at here is go straight into the index refraction or use two or three or four. If, if it's not set up correctly, just simply tap on it, clear what's in there already like that, and just type in the correct index of refraction. Uh, if this isn't set up correctly, then you will get wrong results when you take the traces. Uh, something else you might want to look at is basically results on trace. Um, I've got it selected on graphics at the moment. I think it's a good thing to have it. If you have it as none, you just see the trace itself or you get a lot of random numbers on there. But graphics, it shows you where the launch leads end. So it's very easy to set up your cursor. So I'd recommend to put it on graphics. Now on OTDR connector measure, it doesn't really matter, yes or no, but pond split is really where really, it is really important to set up correctly. So if you have it set up as none, it's set up to do point to point testing. So it won't go through the splitters you're going to get wrong results. So I just I put it on discover and let the OTDR discover all the splitters for you. Okay, so now we've set up the OTDR correctly and all the settings are right. Let's go and press start and take the trace. And the first thing it does is it's just checking the connector of my OTDR to make sure I'm not damaged it, it's not contaminated. Um, and so it's going to do a 30 second um, trace on each wavelength on 1310 and 1625 nanometers and while it's doing that i just explain what you can see on the screen so in the far left hand corner you see a small rectangle with a very scaled down version of the trace um, and within that you see a red rectangle now that red rectangle can be zoomed in or out and that affects what you see on the main display to the right of that you can see the wavelength that it's testing on you see the pulse width that it's set to you see the fiber number and the fan ID. Uh, in the middle, obviously, is the main display, um, and this is going to be what you're going to be working with uh, once the trace is taken. Um, and just below that, you see an acquisition in process, in progress, and this is basically showing you how how near you are to to completing the trace. Okay. So now this is uh, completed. Let's go through what you're going to see on the display now. Okay, so now on the top middle part of the section of display, we can see uh, the loss between cursor A and cursor B. And we can see that's on 1310 at the moment. 
But if we just toggle in that one and two, we can switch between the 1310 and 1625. And you'll see as it displays slightly changes as we toggle. The bottom is all the events that have happened and you can see a series of the splitters and any macro bends and stuff within that. And you can see uh, the loss within certain areas of the trace. To the top right hand side, you get the Smart Link Mapper view, which this simplifies the, the trace. So if you're a novice, this is an excellent um, uh, value add you get with the Viavio TDR. And then on the top left, you still see the main display. The zoom in and shift will just zoom straight in and out of the display. And again, if I've got it on zoom and I'll press enter, then you'll see that rec red rectangle in the top left going zoom in right in and zoom in out and changing the display. Um, of the main screen. Now we're ready to move the cursor. So cursor A is already set up just before the end of the launch lead and, and cursor B is just gonna go just before the FJL. So the point you're gonna be measuring is through through the BJL, through the multiple all the way to the FJL. Um, and now I've put it there, I wanna make sure it's just right before it. So I go into zoom and shift and as you can see, I can zoom straight in and shift across and then I can just select cursor B again and just gently drag it towards uh, the FJ. I'll try and get it as close as possible, not on it, just before it. So if you remember when we set up the OTDR earlier, under the parameters menu, there was uh, a part called results on trace. And I, I kept that as graphics. Um, and if you look at the trace now, you'll see the red markers there. And, and where this is helpful is every time that there's an event, there's a red marker. And uh, if you look at A, that shows the uh, the end of the launch lead. And there's not really a big attenuation drop, so it's really hard to see that. But with, with that set as graphics, the marker is set, so I know where to set up cursor A. And then obviously you see a marker at the next event, which would, which would be the splitter, which you can obviously see the attenuation drop there. And then the next one would be, you'd imagine, at the FJL. Um, and then again, it's just easy for me to, to move my cursor B closer to that marker. Okay, another option you have is if you're out in the field and you've got lots of traces to take and uh, you really don't want to be spending your time out in the field uh, changing your cursors and, and saving your results from there, you can save your results as normal and then use a software such as Fiber Trace 2 and Fiber Cable 2 at a later stage, maybe later that evening. And with this software, you can then move your cursors and save the results. Um, Fiber Trace 2 is a free software from Viavi, and you can easily find that to download from their website. Fiber Cable 2 uh, is a, a licensed paid software, but it really speeds up the process if you're testing on a DFN network. And it all, will also allow you to upload into the NBN workbook for DFN work. Um, and we'll cover that off in a future video. So that concludes today's video and I hope you found it interesting and helpful. Um, you should now be able to set up your OTR correctly to test on the LFN partner network. Uh, if you still got any questions, then call our TMG sales line on 1-800-680-680. Or if you've got any problems with your test equipment, they require servicing or calibration, then call our service uh, support line on 1-800-626-500. Or go and visit our website at www.tmg.com.au where we've got a wealth of information and videos on all the test equipment and tools that we provide. Um, until the next video, goodbye.